What is this thing? Th these are my samples. I wrap like this. Oh, oh, got it. I yeah. thought this was something for the camera. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so okay, so this is Ben. Anyway, we're in the, um, where are we, briefly? We're in the uh, X-ray diffraction laboratory at UCLA. Okay, so Ben is going to basically teach me how to use this machine, so I'm just going to watch him today. It'll be a lot of fun, so you get to join the fun. Let's do it. All right. So briefly explain what XRD is, real briefly. Sure. So in X-ray diffraction, uh, which is what XRD stands for, you've got X-rays coming in from an X-ray source, usually a copper K-alpha, so it's like a, a copper X-ray source. And it'll release these X-rays that'll hit your sample. And when it hits your sample, it will interact at the atomic level with the lattice of your uh, material. So you've got certain spacing between the atoms in your material, and it will go right through if there's a space, and it'll bounce off if there's an atom in the way. And so what ends up happening is you've got like these x-rays coming in at all these different angles, and at some angles, they'll go straight through, and at other angles, they're gonna hit an atom in the lattice and bounce off. And depending on how much, you know, how many atoms there are in that particular lattice plane, you'll get a bigger signal or not. And those, those signals you'll see in, the, in a minute will correspond to the crystal structure of whatever material you're trying to measure. Okay, so zero background plate. That's a zero background plate. Which is made out of a single crystal of quartz and uh, should be invisible to the X-ray diffractometer which is right over here. Okay, well I'm gonna be using my samples which are zeolite. We're going to do the simple test first. Yeah. Control sample. So uh, right now I'm just uh, opening the, uh, the glass doors over here which lead to the diffractometer. Uh, right now it's on low power like uh, the 10, although uh, we're gonna increase that when we actually run it. Uh, so we're prepping the sample right now? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's got a little clamp right here. Okay. And this clamp is going to clamp in this guy right here. Okay. So I'm going to clamp it in right now. So it just sits on there. Yep. It's just your background. And it's going to be, it's got, you know, the x-rays will just go right through it. So you don't have to worry about it. So I'm going to take uh, just one of these spatulas. And I'm going to take a little bit of it. Hopefully it doesn't get too staticky on me. How much does it take? doesn't really need that much. I just need to make sure that it's enough that uh, I can get it flat on this thing. So there's a certain distance away from this thing that's optimal. And it's about like a couple of millimeters. And then I try to flatten it out. Yeah, this actually flattens really nicely. Yeah. No. The x-rays, uh, once you actually like turn the machine on, or rather turn the, the x-rays on, or set and set a program, then they'll come out of this source over here. They'll hit this thing and then they'll reflect off into this detector. Oh, so nothing moves right now. It's all stationary and it stays that way? Uh, it won't, want, it's stationary now, yeah. But once, it, uh, once it's turned on, then this thing and this thing will start okay, doing so that. Okay, you your angle. Exactly, yeah. And so the degree that like this is, yes. plus the degree that it is over there, which will be the same degree, okay. is your two theta angle okay. that you're gonna see on the x-axis. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and close it up. I don't. Now we're going to up the current. So right now it's set at like a baseline current uh, because if you turn off the, the machine, it takes a while for it to reboot. And so they just keep it at like a low current state. And when you're ready to use it, you just turn up the current. So you go from 10 to 40. And then you can hear it. Yeah. And you can see over here it increasing as well. That's the current? That's the current. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it's at 40 uh, milliamps. And the, the tension is always kept the same at uh, 45 uh, kilovolts. So here it shows the actual degrees in two theta that it's at. And so you can actually, I mean, you can't really see because of how slow it's moving, but it's very slowly increasing. Right now it's at fifth, like almost 16 degrees two theta. Yes. So we're actually getting a peak right now, it looks like right so, away. So can you explain to me what we're looking at here? These are the... Yeah, so what this two, shows you... Two theta degree. So it's the angle 
on the bottom. Yeah. And this is the counts. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is the intensity. So right now, it, we just encountered like our first peak. Which is a, which is resembling some chemical compound or? Well, what it's resembling, what it means is that it's a, uh, it's a particular lattice plane within uh, oh, yeah, your structure. It's a diffraction, so mm -hmm. it's, it's showing us the crystal structure. Yeah, yeah. so this fact. peak is good news. It's, it's pretty much what we expected, like at around 6 point something, 6.2, 2.9. I'm hoping that it's the biggest peak because that's what it seems to be in all of these spectra. Yeah. But, you know, and these are at like 6.2 or so as well. So it's a good sign. And the next one here, we can just kind of trace this. It should have nothing until 10. So let's see what happens. So this should be the position that the next peak shows up in. So the peaks that we're seeing here is we're looking down the lattice Mm -hmm. And we're seeing exactly... Well, I would say before what? you get to a peak, you're looking through the lattice and it's like, you know, you're looking through a space in the lattice. So, so you see a high peak because you're seeing lots of x-rays go through all the way through the windows? It's the opposite. Oh. It's like you're looking through, it's going straight through, and the detector only picks things up when things scatter. Because if you oh. notice, because it's at that angle, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking through this lattice and it's just like an empty space, almost like if you've ever gone past like a cornfield with okay. like, you know, yep. yeah. So like you go through it like a certain angle, right? And you can look right through and then all of a sudden it's blocked. When it's blocked, that's your peak. That's your peak. Yeah. It's then scattering. you, yeah, then you go through again and it's like, oh, now I can see through all the way to the other side of the field. You know, this is a space without a peak. And then you go to some other angle, eventually it's going to interfere again. That's another peak. Okay. Got That's it. how it works. And look at that. Right at 10, I there's see. another peak. So we're looking, we're looking like we know what we're doing. Perfect. And then, yeah, here comes another peak, which we're expecting. We definitely have the, at least some crystal patterns that are consistent with what we're seeing in this. So that's good. So that, we, that way we can characterize this more easily. Yeah, so where the mouse is right now, I'm expecting another peak to show up. Right on cue. This is like waiting, waiting <laughs> watching paint dry. Oh, this uh, look it's up kind of exciting. Oh, that? geez. Oh, it is? Oh, no. So the fact that that peak is so much bigger, you know, it might have something to do with, you know, the, the way the atoms are arranged in your lattice, you know. What we could do is like figure out what this peak in particular like represents. Oh, so everything might be. Okay, yeah, I each think one. I understand. Each one represents like a different you know interference time, and so there's certain atoms like in that path that are blocking it. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I have this powder that's a structured lattice, and it's 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 in this scattered form, so it's had, it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. When you put this in there. Yeah. How does this know what angle it's hitting when it's completely mixed up? So it's, uh, you know, this is what you would call like a isotropic. So it's like everything is oriented in all sorts of different ways, right? Exactly. But uh, when, and this thing is a two dimensional detector. So it only is detecting it, you know, looking from like, you know, downward like this at this angle. Okay. Like you're not seeing it from like this angle, for instance. Okay. So yes, there are gonna be a lot of things that are like oriented in such a way that it's gonna reflect in a different way, right? So what this is gonna do is it's gonna pick up on all of that. And in fact, the reason why the size of these different uh, positions are different than you might see in these patterns is actually because you might have preferential orientation in the grain within that sample. So some of them are more preferentially oriented in a certain way, and so you get more like, yeah, you uh, get a higher peak. That's why that one peak might be taller because right. everything's sort of oriented in that fashion. Right. So it so might be that normally, if things are like, uh, you know, uh, in a certain like orientation, then you get this thing as the highest. This, if everything is the same orientation, but yours might be, for whatever reason, like actually preferential, preferentially oriented a different way, and so that's why you're seeing a different peak as your strongest peak. So then my question is, is, if that's the case, wouldn't all these peaks just be shifted around the angle? So their placement would still be the same because if you're looking at like a crystal, yeah. like you're still gonna get the same 
angle like of that crystal it'll just be like whether it's this way you know then you're not going to see like the ones for you know if it's if it's oriented this way like horizontally to your uh, surface then you're going to see ones that are that you would see horizontally whereas if it's this way you're going to see ones that you would see like vertically right or perpendicular um and so they're going to be different but uh, sometimes they're the same if you've got if the structure itself is symmetrical right so if it's symmetrical then it really doesn't matter how you turn it really you're always going to get like similar stuff so you know all of these greens you know you've got every single orientation i assume but some of them might be stronger than others in their orientation so you'll see uh so you'll see every single orientation's peaks that you could see but some of them you'll see stronger because of that. Does, does that make? Did that answer your so. question? Okay. I think so. All right. So let's let's go ahead and switch it out. Okay, we're gonna put the new sample in. Yep. Yeah, so, so right now we're not even seeing any peaks. We'll see if this one at ten comes up. Does this tell us that possibly we've destroyed the structure, the lattice? That is possible. Because that's what I wanted to know if the structure changed. How hot you heat it? Five hundred. This stuff doesn't melt to like twelve hundred. So it shouldn't have changed the structure, but if the structure changed, it's because it's loaded with other crap. Right. If this was full of, um, here's the other thing. This sample versus a different one we have would be a good to test against because this sample did not get calcined enough, which is why it's gray. I the see. The other sample was calcined twice on, and it turned out white. Really? So it, this is not enough time to calcine complete. So that's the one we're running? Yeah. So maybe we've filled in all the pores with junk and now we don't see a structure blast? I, Is this true? I guess it'll depend on what we see here. So far we're seeing nothing. Yeah, so if you look at this spectrum over here, you see you just like, it's pretty flat and then you've just got like these big kind of, you know, like giant really broad peaks uh, or peak. So what that means, and it, you know, if you look at this one, right? You don't see that, like it's just a flat baseline and then you've just got all these sharp peaks coming up. So what this tells you is that this giant thing over here is actually like all of these big peaks over here flattened and broadened out into one gigantic amorphous peak. And the reason this happens is because the material itself is no longer uh, crystalline. It's like glass in that it's like amorphous. Yeah, like there's no, uh, there's no clear like repeating bond pattern. So then it would be interesting if the other zeolite that we definitely removed all organics from mm -hmm. does have a crystal structure. And if it does, does that mean that possibly the organics that may be left in this sample could be ruining the test? So it's, it's possible that's what, that what is happening is like as you're heating it up, the organics themselves start to dissolve in a way your structure and it, it, it basically reaches like a false, uh, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like glass transition state temperature mm -hmm. that you know normally it would not reach at that temperature, but because of these organics around, uh, it ends up like catalyzing this process. Oh. And so it'll cause, or maybe it's the platinum or the palladium, I mean, that's catalyzing this, this process, you know? Whatever it is, like it seems like the, like you no longer have like cages it's probably all just into like an amorphous like glass aluminum right. like mixture. Okay, yeah. So let's, you know, we definitely need to take a look at some of the others just to, to see if you think there's another one that is not amorphous for whatever reason, like that'll be interesting. Yeah. That way you would at least learn that like the zeolite itself isn't having this problem. It's something that you're loading that's causing this like to catalyze okay. into this. Okay. Yeah. But like, yeah, there is, <laughs> There is nothing but this amorphous stuff. It's pretty bad. It's pretty clear that it's definitely amorphous. So if there it. is palladium in this sample, yeah. you'll either see it in the form of palladium atoms forming a palladium uh, structure, which would mean that it's not actually in your zeolite. Or if it's in the zeolite, then you'll see it like splitting certain peaks in your zeolite pattern. What if it's both? What if it's on the external and the internal? You'll see both. Because I washed it really good, but that doesn't mean anything. We'll find out. And it's got the organics in it. 
so how would you'll that see that too okay. which if the well you'll see it if the organics are in a lattice if the organics are not in the lattice or not in a lattice i should say of their own then you won't see them as an organic lattice but what you'll see is once again like splitting of various peaks because they're taking up space in what is an already existing lattice okay Makes um, sense. yeah so i got these five on here that's a good sign what's that oh I'm yes seeing peaks yeah yeah so so what is the g one, uh g is a, the, the different uh i have two controls right now with different quantities of the same ingredients oh okay that's the only difference is really the quantities but the difference here is, is that the big. organics are still in there mm -hmm. and they're not really burned out i and see so this could cause a really bad thing especially when we already ran a test for something similar so that's a good flaw that we know we have how could you get out the organics burn them out with oh, okay so this one has went through the exact same process as this one identical the only difference is except quantity is different of plate of pla it. Uh, palladium in that's there that's it that's the only difference well that's interesting so briefly explain this to me yeah so we've got air calcinated mm -hmm. and then this one is uh just this the fresh, fresh. Here, so these actually, two yeah. should switch be, those positions those two should be comparable yeah they do look comparable so they look the I same didn't, i didn't ruin the structure that's a good thing yeah so it is actually stable on its own at that temperature that's which good. you expected uh, yes um now this one is the one that is loaded and you can see the only difference really is like there's a slight shoulder on this one over here and also there's this hmm. extra peak over here okay so those must be palladium slash organics yeah maybe? so they they're probably related to the palladium or the organics um I think well, that's pretty much the only change there. Be. And then this one is that issue. And this one, though, does not have it. So what that means that that well, means that that's probably organics. So yeah, it could be that this is organic. OK, so looking at these. Uh, let's see. I think all of these peaks look relatively the same height with regard to one another, right? Like there's no significant changes there. Um, there's a slight peak shift though, although that might just have to do with the height of the sample. This one has a, a slightly different shoulder though, like a more pronounced shoulder. So that could mean something. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily anything. Um, although, it's hard to say. Maybe it is something. All right, I think... Yeah, I think we need to know more about, uh, about the zeolite beforehand to know exactly what to look for, but it might be that it might be that like a change in a shoulder or the ratio of any of these peaks is what, you know, is what you're looking for. Right now, it looks like they're all the same, relatively, with regard to one another, you know what I'm saying? Like, what I'm looking for is like, for these two peaks or something, you know, for like this peak to be shorter compared to like other peaks here, you know, than it would be in the bare zeolite. Okay. okay, Ben, thank you for helping me out. Of course, Hopefully my pleasure. one day, maybe I'll actually be using this machine by myself, but yeah. until then, I got Ben. Yeah, Big and help. you'll get some x-ray training at some point. That's yep. all you need according to Saeed, so. Yep, and today actually, what I did while I was here at UCLA was actually get my TEM training. That's right. It's pretty, pretty ridiculous. Pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive and ridiculous all at the same time. I'm pretty excited about that, yeah. so. Probably one of the few people not trained, like, in science who knows how to use the TEM. Pretty that'll great. Be, that'll be fun. So, all right. All right, man. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. All right. Until next time. All right. Cool. Yeah. So. Uh